See, if you run into an old school Pentecostal individual and ask them how they're doing, they'll just say, I thank the Lord for being saved, sanctified, and the Holy Ghost filled, five baptized. See, but that is a process. You don't understand. They just gave you their resume. They just told you that I am qualified to speak to my situation and it has no other choice but to change. I am qualified to go into the hospital. I might not have a doctorate in theology. I might not have a doctorate in divinity, but I know a name that is above every name. And at that name, they tell me that every knee above on the earth and under the earth shall bow and confess that he is Lord. That name is Jesus. But it is a process. I ask that you go with me to Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. That will be my text for tonight. It is a process. I'm not going to tell nobody that it's easy. Oh no! But 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 I will tell you that it's so easy that a fool couldn't hear it if he wanted to. It's so easy that see see we serve a God that is not like man. In fact, He said that my thoughts are not your thought, neither are my ways your ways. See where we take things that are of the utmost importance and put them on the top shelf. God take things that are the that are of the utmost important and put them on on the bottom shelf. The reason he does that is because he understands that if he never puts them on the bottom shelf, there would be no way possible that we could ever reach them. Amen. But you ought to be grateful that you're saved. Do I got any saved folk in here? Just raise your hand. I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost field. I'm not talking about the sanctified. Just folk that have been saved from their sins. See, those are different processes. You got to understand. You can be saved from your sin and ain't never felt the Holy Ghost. You can be saved from your sin and live in a hellish life. Yes, you may. You ain't right. sanctified, you just saved. All you right, just got saved from getting out of the bed with that married man. Oh. You just saved from cussing and fussing. You ain't sanctified right. yet. All right now. But I, but you want to just thank God that you're saved. That's the first act of grace. Yeah. Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. What we must understand is life outside of Christ is death. <laughs> there is no way that you can live outside of Christ and inherit eternal life. Because the Bible says that neither a thief nor a robber shall enter in. And if you try to get to God, I understand that a few years ago, our beloved friend Oprah, she got up and she said, I feel that if you call him the light, or you call him this, or you call him that, there are many paths to God. Yes, there's many roads, but there's only one road that leads to the gate. There's only one road that you can get in and you don't have to climb over the fence. You don't have to dig a trench to get to God and that's through Jesus. And you have to understand that without Jesus you are under Satan's thumb and he has your mind and you, and everything that looks good to you and everything that feels good to you because you are bound by your flesh you have no choice but to be subject unto those things. But look at somebody and say but God. Thank you. Mm. But God, he knew ahead of time. Yeah. He knew ahead of time just who you was. He knew you when he created Adam and Eve. Amen. He knew you before he flung the stars into the sky. Amen. God knew you and he loved you with a perfect love. Amen. I came to tell somebody on today, if nobody else told you they love you on today, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much he gave his son. What type of man would give his own? For a world that he knew would mess up. For a world that he knew was jacked up. For a world that he knew wasn't fit worth saving. But he did it anyhow. God. It was that love, that love, that it was that love that kept Jesus on Calvary's cross. It was that love that kept him in the grave three days. But I thank God for the salvation and the grace that got him up that Sunday morning. What you must understand is your salvation is a work of God's grace. And many people don't understand what grace is. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. You could not earn it. You did not deserve it. You were not fit for it. You could not apply. You had too many things on your record against you. Number one, you were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. We must understand that it was not our own doing. I understand that we have some Christians, once they pick, once God picks them up out of the muck and the mire and clay, and once God puts 
a new coat on them and gives them a ring and cuts the batter cap. They have a tendency to think that it was me all along. I did it and I'm self-righteous because see, God needs me. Baby, God don't need you. He will take a wine note, clean him up, and show you exactly what praise and worship is. But we must understand that God just looked over the crowd and chose you. He saw something in you that he wanted to use. That's why I'm thankful I'm saved. That's why you don't have to pump me. You don't have to prime me. Because see, when I come into the building, the least that I owe God is a thank you. See, because I understand that without him, I'm nothing. I understand that it is in him that I live, that I breathe, and that I have. My very essence is due to him. The reason that I'm standing here today and not stretched out in Edgewood Cemetery is because of God. Amen. You got to understand, but by the same token, God does not invest in junk. I heard Apostle say a few weeks ago that God got him out of a garage sale. See, see, somebody had thrown him in the garage and left him there and said he wouldn't be nothing. See, but they brought me to the church rummage sale. And see, they said, this whole thing you can use him. See, he's good and he does this and he does that, but he has a few ticks about him. He's a little fast at the mouth. He, he's a little hot-headed. He, he's a little out of place and sometimes he's inappropriate. And they left me at the rummage sale, but don't you know Jesus does rummage sales? Don't you know Jesus goes to the city dump? Don't you know Jesus stops by garage sales? Don't you know Jesus looks in the muck and the mire to find something that everybody else no longer wants? And he says, see this I can use. See this is because once I clean it up, it'll understand that I am God and besides me there is none other. Once I clean him up and give him a testimony, he won't mind opening his mouth because he was already flipped at the mouth. See, God saves you. He does not change your personality. Amen. You do not become a zombie. You are saved by his grace. See, his favor gets on your life and it takes what the world no longer wants. It takes what the world can no longer use and it edifies God. Amen. That's what we must understand. But I I did a little research, I did a little studying, and I found out that the word saved comes from the Greek word sozo. Look at somebody and say sozo. Uh, sozo means to save, to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger and destruction. Digging a little deeper, he, uh, it keeps you and, um, yes, and will save you from disease. Don't you know sin is a disease of the soul? Sin is a cantankerous disease that, that the human race developed as soon as Adam and Eve bit the fruit. We got a red blood disease that caused us to slowly die. But Jesus came that we might live again. But not only are we spiritually healed through being saved, look at somebody and say so-so, but see, this is for your physical body as well. There is nothing that can jump on you when you are saved that God will not get off of you. There is nothing that can invade you without God's permission. See, you have to understand, saved folk are cured from cancer. You have to understand, saved folk don't have to worry about Alzheimer's and arthritis. Because see, there is a fountain filled with blood. And see, it was drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath that blood. They lose all their guilty stain. I don't care what you got on you before you met Christ. I don't care what you get on you in the process of getting to know him better. He wants you to come to him just as you are. He's a cleaning service. He'll take all the world off of you and show them that it is possible. He will show them that something good can come out the hood. He will show them that a single mother can raise a productive son without the interference of a man. Come on, somebody. Anybody grateful to be saved? Come on, somebody. I want some grateful folk. Some folk that say, thank you, Lord. You didn't have to pick me up, but I'm glad that you did. You didn't have to save my life, but I'm glad that you did. You could have let the truck hit me, but you didn't. You could have let disease. Come on, I want some grateful folk. See, grateful folk don't need an organ. Grateful folk don't need a set of drums. They just bring their thing on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's already done for them. See, there is an instantaneous reaction that happens in their soul. Something deep down on the inside of them has a thank you. Something deep down on the inside of them says, Lord, I appreciate you. Come on, somebody, give him praise. 
Thank you.